have this theory that in nature, when nature has given you things that are similarly colored, they would taste good together. I did find this particular pairing, octopus with blackberries, that I felt was a really knockout combination. I'm Jenny Dorsey, and today I'll be showing you how to make my lemon verbena octopus tarine. I love this recipe because it sounds kind of complicated and it looks really gourmet, but it's really simple and I think you'll want to make it at home as well. Make sure to subscribe below because I'll be making two more recipes that also sound strange but very delicious. Some spot prawns with a morel and white chocolate sauce, as well as banana ice cream with cheddar goldfish ice cream cone. Let's get right to the recipe. So first thing first, we are going to prep our octopus. So when you have a raw octopus like this, the only thing you need to do is first pull out its beak. Its beak is found at the base of the octopus at the very center. This is how the octopus eats, and this is like a sharp little thing that you definitely do not want to consume yourself. And to remove it, you're just gonna stick your finger in, and you're literally just going to grab it and pull it out. So you can pull that out and discard, and that's it. Now what I like to do is I like to blanch the octopus for about a minute in hot boiling water just to remove any potential impurities from the surface or anywhere. So you do want to time yourself, you don't want to overcook your octopus, so just one minute is perfectly good because for the rest of this recipe we're going to sous vide the octopus. If you're new to sous vide, essentially it is a method of cooking food where you are cooking in a controlled water environment. So what that means is you're going to put your meat, octopus, item of choice, seal it in a plastic bag and put it into a water bath that is set at a certain temperature. What this does is that it ensures whatever you're cooking is cooked to that temperature evenly throughout. It is very helpful for delicate items like an octopus, shrimp, prawns, things that tend to overcook quickly. So how we're gonna process this is we're going to cut off its head and then we're just gonna slice it in half and put it into a sous vide bag. Pop in our octopus with the head. All right, so now that we have our octopus, we're going to add in all of our aromatics and our flavorings. So first we have some onion, some ginger, as well as some garlic. And next, some salt. I'm also going to add our lemon verbena here. This is dried lemon verbena. Finally, a little bit of coconut oil here. And for our last ingredient, I am going to use some green peppercorn. I want to make sure to toss them around, get them dispersed evenly. So now I'm going to slide in my sous vide machine. And this is set at 170 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to plop this whole thing in. This is going to be sous vide for five hours. Now that our octopus has been cooking for five hours, it is ready to be pulled out of the sous vide. So we'll pull this out and shake off all of the goodies that we put inside it. So we've got like a large piece of octopus here, so I am going to slice this in half. And then I have two little loaf containers. So what you're gonna do is layer in your tentacles. And they're lined with plastic so that they're easily removable later. And we've got a little overhang for my plastic wrap, which is very useful because we can use it now to wrap up our octopus. You can pour out your liquid through a strainer, and if you want, you can pour it into here. So you just wanna seal this completely because it's going to get pressed down and you don't want your other little loaf pans or your weight to be touching the octopus. And then this is the point, like it's like a physics experiment. I have a very large book, the La Russe Gastronomique, super handy in this particular scenario. It is plastic wrapped and I'm going to use it to press down my octopus. Au voila. This is the easiest way to press things, I think, at home. In restaurants, you can use actual weights and it won't look quite so sketchy. But I think this works fantastically and you don't need to buy anything extra. You'll want to press this overnight in your fridge, probably at least 8 to 12 hours. Essentially, you are cooking mustard seeds under pressure, or if you don't have a pressure cooker, you can also just do this in 
some uh, in a pot on the stove. You're cooking them so that they kind of expand and so therefore, instead of biting into a hard seed, they kind of pop a little bit in your mouth. It provides a little bit of a textural contrast to our dish. So literally all you have to do is dump everything in. We got our mustard seeds, rice vinegar, plus some water, and then finally a little bit of salt and sugar. So with that, we're gonna pressure cook this for 20 minutes. Now that our octopus has sat overnight, we are ready for the big reveal. It has congealed completely into a solid block, and we're gonna just carefully lift it out. This is the useful part of having wrapped the whole thing in plastic, so it's very easy to remove. It's like unwrapping a little purple octopus present. And you just wanna make sure you are using a very nice, sharp knife so that you can slice this as thinly as possible. So we're just going to slice through and take a look at how this cross section looks. So a good rule of thumb when plating is that odd numbers always look a little bit nicer than even ones. And you want to use white space. White space is 100% your friend. So give yourself room on the plate even when it might sometimes feel a little unnatural. Got some blackberries over here, and then a little bit of mustard caviar. Too much symmetry sometimes feels a little bit weird. It's really easy to tell when something's not exactly symmetrical, so it's actually almost better to purposely make things like a little asymmetrical. For example, if you wanna make sure that people have a little bit of everything in one bite, make sure that you have enough ingredients on your plate. You have your first appetizer for a nice dinner party that you're hosting. Really simple, as you can see, you can make this ahead of time. For now, I am going to dig in. Mm. This is just such a nice summer food. A little sweet, a little salty, and it pairs really well with like a crisp orange or a rosé or something refreshing that you want to drink on a hot day. Thanks for following along as I made this lemon verbena octopus screen and hope you also enjoy your version at home. Definitely please let me know how yours turned out. And don't forget to subscribe. There's two more videos like this coming out soon. One with white chocolate and morel sauce and spot prawns, and the other with banana ice cream and cheddar cracker cones. So stay tuned. <laughs>